Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We'll take you through the pages of our national dailies as off the press, and that's what we call it. G.D. Johnson is on standby to join the conversation. It's good to have you, G.D. Johnson. Good morning. Good morning, Messi, and a good morning to Kofi, and good morning to all our viewers all over the world. It's a wonderful Friday. That's all right. Let's take a look at the Daily Independent, and uh, start off reading the board caption, Nobody should be allowed to raise army of thugs. Buhari is quoted and recounts his Kaduna near-death experience in 2014. And that's uh, right underneath the board caption. Away from the board caption, 2023, ex-governors, senators back Ashiwaju Ahmed Tanumbu's presidential bid. You also have reps probe 178,459 Missing please firearms from Amory. Interesting. Governor Tom Sines amended anti open grazing law. It's also now the caption on Daily Independent. And just before we move away, neck yet to decide on fuel pump price and subsidy removal. APC Northeast lawmakers back North Central colleagues on Bellows presidential bid. My on right cost for 2023 presidency. And this is some of the headlines on the Daily Independent. We move on to the Nation newspaper with these uh, headlines. NEC petrol subsidy can't continue beyond June. That's talking about the National Economic Council uh, putting of the decision uh, to increase uh, or consider a report to increase uh, the pump price of petrol by June. Uh, to 302 Naira. Uh, it also has these sub headlines decision on pump price belongs to NNPC. No going back on January 27 protest, says NLC. Interesting times, and uh, we hope for the best. At the top of the punch of the nation newspaper, uh, Bello to Tinbu, you can take Lagos feeds to Abuja. You can take Lagos feeds to Abuja. Niger governor backs APC stalwart, ex governor. Visits IBB. Another one. Thanks for linking me to your success, Buhari tells El Rufai. Thanks for linking me to your success, Buhari tells El Rufai. Abdul Salami cautions politicians over fiery comments. Abdul Salami cautions politicians over fiery comments. Tax free pay for junior policemen. INEC determined to secure polls. Those are also pages on the pages, front page of the nation newspaper. And at the bottom of the front page, WHO recommends lifting of travel restrictions and reps to probe missing arms. So some missing arms uh, that were said to belong to the Nigeria uh, police force. All right, let's uh, check out the leadership newspaper this morning. Governors moved to avert planned protests over fuel price hike and to meet labor neck takes position in june nlc vows to go on with protests says it's labor communication tool abdul salami baba ahmed one of hardship and inflation away from that you also have i have ibb's blessing to run uh, Bola Tinubu is quoted on that. It reminds us of yesterday's conversation where the headline says ex-governors, I mean, senators, uh, generals would determine the presidency for 2023. Uh, well, uh, you also have this. Erufai has transformed Kaduna with the project. That's what the president is quoted to say. Reps to probe 178,459 missing police arms. And like... Not Central, North East, Legislators, and Dos Yahaya Bello for President. Uh, this is some of the headlines on uh, the, the leadership newspaper this morning. Next up, we have the Punch newspaper with the uh, bold headline, uh, Abdul Salami, workers warn FG as NEC decides subsidy removal June. That's uh, still talking about the National Economic Council led by the vice president and including the 36 governors. Um, it also has the following uh, kickers. A petrol price hike will push more Nigerians deeper into poverty once ex-head of state. A life already difficult for Nigerians. Don't increase fuel pump price, Sanu tells FG. 
and there is a six month provision for fuel subsidy he will take a position after that council that's the national economic council at the top of the front page of the punch newspaper uh, this friday port hackett refinery projects projects uh, 3.96 billion liters petrol annually aviation fuel report uh, it's interesting hope that will leave uh, the pages of a uh, 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 report to actuality reps order probe of allegedly missing 178,459 police firearms wow that's a lot uh, electoral act faces delay at national assembly harmonization yet to start uh, senator accuses bajabia miller of hidden agenda speaker fumes that's worth reading it's on page eight of the punch newspaper other headlines 51,392 workers change pension companies move 190.62 billion naira quite some money um, in that sector you would say reps order probe of contract kickbacks extortion by MDA officials um, that's amazing and it's one to watch it's on page 21 of the punch newspaper Buhari recalls Kaduna recalls Kaduna bombing experience. LFI demands 7 billion naira reimbursement. So, no surprises that he invited the president to come, commission, so he could tell him directly, Give me my money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, INC, Yoruba Group, seek to join CNG's suit on Biafran agitation. LASMA provides or probes officers' attack on commercial bus female passengers are injured and you transformed lagos to same for nigeria niger state governor tells tinubu hmm. all right let's have gd johnson share his thoughts on the issues good to have you join us once again it's, it's, it's a pleasure to be with you messi and kofi and our viewers all over the world okay so gd johnson wonderful. Let's start off with the big one. It's dominating all of the papers, and this is uh, Reps Probe, 1,780, uh, 1, I beg your pardon, 178,459 missing please firearms from the Armory. Uh, this is on the Daily Independent, but it, it's made the rounds on all of the papers this morning. It's business as usual. Don't get excited. It's business as usual. And what, what has been the head product of uh, honorable, honorable Minister of the Mic? The probe of Honorable Minister of the Mic. So uh, every, after every cycle, they start a drama, a uh, distracting drama to distract us from the reality of what is going on. We just hear the beginning of the probe. We will not see the end of the probe. That's just, that's, uh, that's just, that's just my take on it. How, um, how will that happen? And then they will start the probe without inviting people to come and answer questions with respect to 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 missing firearms and then we talk about the security challenges which we have to raise red flag for everybody they shouldn't even waste time in, in, in carrying out this investigation but like typical proofs we have had in the past in this country coming from the national assembly well don't let me be too pessimistic, but as far as I'm concerned, we we'll just hear about the beginning of the probe. We we'll not see anything out of it. There won't be any prosecution. There won't be anything. Nothing has happened to the NDDC probe. Um, it, it, it gathered national spotlight. Um, it created um, cliches and um, commonplace statement for people. And when people want to joke, they say, oh, Honorable Minister, please off the mic. We have not seen anything out of it concerning it. So this one, hopefully we'll see something positive out of it because the major issue facing our country is the issue of security challenges, kidnapping, banditry, terrorism. And if firearms that are meant to secure the lives of Nigeria are missing, how is it missing? Through which channel is it missing? In other civilized climate, the Inspector General of Police will have been gone. All of the people that are in charge will have been gone. At least they will have an excuse first while the probe is going on. But they are carrying out the probe. Are no, people have not been asked to, to step aside 
why the probe is going on, so that the process cannot be corrupted. And we are just seeing it on the pages of newspaper. God will help Nigeria, and God will help the House of Rep members. Quite, quite a, a, a very, very pessimistic uh, uh, um, position on, on this, uh, Mr. Johnson. But um, I'm sure what's on the mind also of um, um, people out there watching this morning is um, 178,000 you know, arms, weapons. That, that's a lot. I mean, how, how does, th does such an amount of weapons go missing um, from the Nigeria police force? It's, it's... You are alarmed. You see the way you are alarmed. It is the way I'm alarmed. But the people involved are they alarmed? Are they each as shocked as you are? And I throw it back to you. Let's assume that you are given the power of the state to manage the state for 24 hours or 48 hours, and you make this discovery. What do you think will happen? How are you going to react? Now, see, when this report came out, see the way the report was released. There's no... there's. People are not shocked or rattled in, in, in nine places with respect to disappearance of firearms. It's a criminal. It's in fact those that are involved will be tried for sedition. Are they trying to plan to subvert um, elected authority? Are they planning to subvert government? What did they use the firearms for? So these are the issues that you agitate the balance of an average Nigerian. But these are the issues that should be of concern, not only to the prep, the Senate should, in fact, there should have been a joint committee to look into this matter so that they can quickly dispatch this issue and urge to rule and people to answer questions. But uh, you see what, what happened with the probe? I don't want to lose my sanity because of probe that has no end. Okay, let's still stay with the Daily Independent newspaper. Another interesting is the fact that NEC is yet to decide on fuel pump price and subsidy removal. Now, look, it's, it's a matter of double speak. NEC said NNPC has the right to fix the prices. And here, in, in, that, same, in that same news report, you see the rider. Now, at the same time, NEC is saying that they are yet to decide and that, you know what, this present first subsidy cannot sustain us beyond June, beyond June 2020. The question you ask is, who is subsidized who? And where is the subsidy coming from? Because from my, from, my, from my teenage years to my adulthood, all I've heard from government is subsidy remover, subsidy remover, until we got to the stage we were in when this present administration assured us that they are going to leave the prices to market forces, that they are not going to be paying subsidy and the rest of it. And now they came back again to tell us that, oh, they have to remove the subsidy. And you ask yourself this question, does it require rocket science for us to fix our refinery? Does it require rocket science? Now, it's only in Nigeria that you are fluctuating at every, every year or every other year that you are fluctuating prices for our petroleum product. It's only in Nigeria that we import products that God has naturally endowed us with. Now, it shows our crude thinking. God was crude oil. Now, because we can't think, we don't have the thinking faculty to transform this crude oil into petroleum products, diesel, um, kerosene, and the rest of it. Now, we have to import that crude to export the crude and import finished petroleum petroleum since we are crude and those that are are, are are innovative in their thinking so they will dictate the price they dictate the price with which they buy our crude and they dictate the price in which they sell the refined products back to us and you begin to wonder why has it taken since the advent of democratic governance any child that is given back to will be 20 will be 23 years old now 20 years is the age of responsibility. Now, if after 23 years, leadership at the state level, at the federal level, across party divide, PDP, APC, CNAD, APP, CNC, and the rest of them, they've not been able to come out with a comprehensive policy to deal with the major foreign exchange, Anna for Nigeria, and the major 
product that we use to sustain our economy that we have to depend on foreign importation of products that God has naturally endowed us with. He tells you something is wrong with our polity, something is wrong with our public administrator, and something is wrong with those that are parading themselves to be our political leaders of 2023. Okay, so but we still have, you know, an issue on, on the table and the issue of that the president has not directed, the president did not direct the removal of subsidies. So that's on the one hand. And on the other hand, uh, uh, you also have the discrepancy, the Minister for Culture saying, oh, they're going to probe all of that. So, uh, you know, with all of this confusion, I really don't know what NEC ought to be deciding. Well, it said it's National Economic Council. If national, if president does it require presidential directive, does the president have the power to single-handedly call for removal of subsidy? Uh, were there provisions in the 2022 cons 2022 budget budget, um, budget. Debt, but 2022 budget for, for 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 payment of subsidy? Because no single payment can be made by anybody except it is approved by the national assembly. So are there provisions for payment of subsidy in 2021 budget? Are there provisions for in 2020 budget? Are there provisions for it in 2019 budget? So these are questions that will be asking ourselves. Now, if you are going to pay till June and the budget has been signed into law, and that means that if there are provisions for it, for the payment to be made till June, why were there no the provisions for it from June to December? So these are basic questions and that, that, that we need to ask. However, it's abracadabra. The more you look, the less you see, and the more confused you become. When you begin to look at how we manage our national assets and how we manage our economy, this is a monoproduct economy. And as a result of not managing that monoproduct economy, because everything centers around um, around them, around petroleum product, centers around crude oil. And since we don't know how to manage our 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 monoproduct economy, we manage the crude oil in a crude way. So our economy is crude. Inflation is left, right, and center. The price of goods are skyrocketing, and people can't make ends meet. And even governments are not fulfilling its, in its obligation. People are not having um, the real deliverables of democracy. So I don't. I just. I just don't know what to say because the more the more you look at this matter, the more you confuse. Like, what is really wrong in this sector? What is really wrong in the sector? Why can't we get it right? Mr. If small neighboring countries that don't have petroleum products can have refineries and they have a stable price for their petroleum products, why can't we have us? Since we are not able to manage that, and that's why we have seen that Naira has engaged in a free fall. You see that the value of our currency, the value of our currency is so inconsistent that it will, the, incons the consistent inconsistency that has characterized the exchange value of Naira is a reflection of our mismanagement of the natural resources that we build our economy on, we have not been able to manage. Uh, Mr. Johnson, before we move on to uh, next headline, um, Labour is still insisting it will go ahead with its uh, proposed uh, uh, strike on, on, on this this uh, fuel subsidy removal. Uh, the are, they, union... are, they, are they still in existence? <laughs> the Trade Union Congress is, is considering whether to go ahead. Uh, the Nigerian so, Governors Forum has said they would meet with Labour to try and iron things out. What do you think should happen going forward? Can we even afford another strike? Is, are they still in existence? You recall when Adas Oshiemole was Labour leader at the infantile stage of this democracy. We went on strike in 2002, in 2003, over removal of first in 2004. Now, when he became the governor, he changed his position. As far as I'm concerned, there is nothing like Nigerian Labour Congress. I don't know what's their level of involvement and engagement in, in issues that affect uh, 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 Jilly Johnson, I, I hope you can you can hear us. Apologies uh, for that uh, bit of a network connectivity issue, um, uh, but um, of, if you can hear me, Jilly Johnson, let, let's move Did straight. You yeah, can you hear me, Jilly Johnson, please? I can hear you loud and clear, Kofi. Okay, uh, let, let's go straight to the uh, Punch newspaper. Um, there is a, a, a little. It's given a, first a little 
uh, uh, position on the front page, but it seems to be important. The House of Reps again embarking on another probe. Uh, this time, they, uh, they've ordered a probe of contract kickbacks and extortion by ministries, departments, and agencies, officials, MDA officials. Um, th this should be some good uh, and cheering news. What do you say? I can't hear you. Can you take it again? The House of Representatives has ordered a probe of contract kickbacks and extortion by officials of ministries, departments, and agencies. Is this something that should be sharing news to Nigerians? They are engaging on a wild goose chase. I did not involve this. You see, it's a systemic thing. It's a system, we call it kickback in Nigeria. They call it NMAX in America. Um, they call it NMAX in America. So part of, part of what happens with with, with 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 state contract it's it's the 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 as of we had them um, this law um that when um basically was there madam they call her madam due process where we have i can't recall the act specifically but there was this act that okay public procurement act that talks about the process that should be in place before contracts are awarded do we stick to those do we stick to those principles the House of the House of and the Senate passed it, and Basanjo, I think Basanjo administration signed it into law, and then Ado administration. Do we stick to that? Do we still use that in 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 contract award and monitoring in Nigeria? So, as far as I'm concerned, they are probing this because they want to call the attention of particular ministries or agencies of government they are interested in. I, I'm sorry, I. I I sincerely apologize for having a pessimistic view concerning probe. Because if you have to document the number of probes that we have had in Nigeria, and then you see the one that eventually have outcome, I'm not sure we get up to 5% of outcomes from the probes we have ever had in this country. Since I was young and now that I'm old, I have never seen <laughs> the end product of probes that we have in Nigeria. G.D. <laughs> oh, Johnson, it's all right. Um, let's also check out the leadership newspaper on this one. You have Nas speaking to uh, the electoral umpire, INEX, saying, tackle operational challenges before 2023 elections. Now, the National Assembly that should provide the framework that will guide um, the, the INEC in doing his job up with different types of bottlenecks until pressure was exerted on them by the Nigerian public for them to allow INEC to do its basic constitutional provision. Now, they should not be directing that to INEC. They should look within the frameworks of the existing law. What can we do to help you? Not giving directive to INEC. What they should do is to have a collaboration and have a joint, a joint, a joint understanding and look at, okay, INEC, these are the things that we have observed and what have you observed? And let us come together and reason and how we can strengthen our democratic institution. Not giving directive as if they are in the military regime or they have executive authority to do that. Uh, it's like they don't know what should be their role and they are misplacing what should be their responsibility and placing that on, 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 on INEC. They should work together with INEC, strengthening our electoral act in such a way that it will give INEC um, the power to conduct the election. For example, the power to control the police, in my own thinking, during election, giving directive, shouldn't come from the Inspector General of Police. That power should be given to the INEC chairman. That's my view. The power to control the security apparatus, when it comes to the election, directives when it comes to mobilization and providing security for critical infrastructure of democratic society, because the critical infrastructure of democratic society is the election. Is the election so who, who 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 controls the security apparatus who deploys them who gives them directive that we should have excuse me that we should have within within the framework of our laws so that we take it away from the political class and we take it away from the political appointees and you give that power to INEC and then see whether we will not curtail rigging and see whether we will not deal with the issue of violence that we have when it comes to electoral issues. Well, what, difference, the, what difference would you make if you have, you know, INEC uh, you, calling the shots or controlling the security architecture during the election days or the period of election? 
uh, you, you need to see the way security and details are withdrawn and uh, and 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 uh, are mobilized to other areas. Didn't you see what the president said in Kaduna in one of the pages of newspaper that um, nobody should have should be allowed to have army of talks and it's coming from a retired general of the Nigerian army and presently the commander in chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the president, is saying that he said nobody should be allowed to have an army of talks. Now that statement coming from the president in Canada, recalling how he almost lost his life in 2015, is 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 instructive in this manner for you to know that there are forces. Uh, I was sharing this with my student yesterday. I asked them, the president said in one of the interviews granted to the national TV station that if he named the successor, now the successor will be eliminated. I said, oh, does it mean that there are forces that are more powerful than institutions that we have in the states? Uh, so as far as this issue concerning election, because it's the pathway to public governance, the control of it should be with whoever is controlling that election. We should suspend the authority of governors of president that time and give it to INEC. And the appointment of INEC, we have argued, should be taken away. INEC as a body should be taken away from the executive. And it should be taken to the judiciary, whereby it will be the judiciary that will be responsible for the appointment discipline of all electoral officers across the nation and not making INEC a certain executive body in the 1999 constitution as amended. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Johnson. Uh, permit me to take you back to uh, the Punch newspaper. Um, I've tried to, you know, to bring a little bit of chair to you, but uh, you seem not to be taking some of the things that are, are being said by the authorities, especially the legislature and the executive. But maybe this, this headline would, would cheer you up a bit. You, you talk to you, give us your thoughts on the, um, the perceived or expected removal of petrol subsidy and the confusion um, uh, regarding that. And you, you, you made a point to say, you know what, why don't we have our refineries working? That is the first thing that should be worked on. Well, on the front page of the Punch newspaper, this headline, you know, it, it, it speaks to that. Uh, Port Harcourt Refinery projects 3.96 billion liters of petrol annually aviation fuel. And I just um, I will read a few lines for, from that for you. It says the Port Harcourt Refining Company, currently under rehabilitation, uh, will supply 11 million liters, Mr. Johnson, 11 million liters of premium motor spirit, what we know as petrol, to the domestic market, the latest report put together uh, by the firm has stated. This means the company is expected to produce about 3.96 billion liters of petrol annually. That's not the end. The punch also reports that it also stated in that report uh, that the facility would produce enough aviation turbine kerosene, also known as aviation fuel or jet A1, um, a development that would make Nigeria a hub for the commodity in West Africa. Come on, Mr. Johnson, this should make you happier and more optimistic. Yeah. When Obasanjo was the president, we have turned around maintenance. That was the time that was used for the Paracord refinery, the Cardinal refinery, the Bori refinery. Um, we, in my adult life, um, I have experienced different types of government with different types of policy. Over first subsidy removal, I lost almost 18 months in Unilag as, as a young child protesting and uh, when government comes up, is expected to, is expected to. When expectations are not met, after um, many promises, your spirit is dampened. Now, the, what we need to ask is that what is stopping River State, for example, or the South South State in coming together to have a refinery? What is stopping the Southwest State in coming together to have a refinery? If a private individual could try to cite one in a way, then how much does it cost? Then how many years? After almost 23 years, a quarter of a century, all you need to take away from um, 23 years, 25 years is two years. And we have spent 23 years of democracy. You have seen a quarter of a century, a quarter of a century with consistent democratic governance, 
at the state level and federal level, and we have not been able to do that. I don't have any hope in this present crop of political class. It's, it's a hopeless situation. Sorry. And they will just come to the pages of newspaper um, and try to deceive us and play on our intelligence. We are expected to. We are, it's because they want to remove the subsidy. Now, after they remove the subsidy, they will still go back to business as usual. So, so but, but the question, you know, that would always come up is that why don't we have our refineries, I mean, the existing ones, functional and pro producing at the capacity that it should? Because, probably, because it is providing fleas. It is providing fleas for some people in that sector. People are making money out of this, out of, out of this existing arrangement. People are making money out of this existing arrangement. You ask yourself, and we call ourselves the giant of Africa. We should be giant in everything. We should be. And this is the main trust of our, our economy. It's a monoproduct economy. It's a monoproduct economy. And our crude oil is one of the best in the world. Now, why can't we have refineries in Nigeria produced to meet local demands as well as export to other neighboring countries and hand money on it but it is easier for people to make money from this it's clear you don't need any rocket science you don't need any you don't need any rocket science that people make money from round tripping we don't need we've seen many panels being set up to investigate this by by the fifth the sixth the seventh the eighth the ninth assembly nothing has come out of it and as a young person, I told you, over removal of self-swept subsidy, over protest over fuel subsidy, uh, I lost 18 months in Unilag. I don't know how many years of my adult life that I've lost as a result of protest over fuel, Ike or not, that we stay at home. And it's still, it's, we are still in a cycle. You know what someone said? For us to do the same thing the same way, the same manner, I expect to get a different result. It's the beginning of insanity. You ask yourself this question. After almost a quarter of a century of democratic governance, not a single refinery is working. Not a new one has been established. The existing one have not been refurbished and have not been put in place. Uh, it's insane. Mr. Johnson, it's uh, it's uh, quite a, a very um, a very very serious and um, sensitive matter. Um, you seem still not to be convinced about uh, the prospects of having uh, refineries work, but the, the the rehabilitation and I note they did not they avoided the word turnaround maintenance this time. They went for the word rehabilitation. It started just uh, in 2021. Maybe we should give them some time. Uh, to see what comes out of it, but uh, we'll have you here again. We'll have you here again. Uh, um, we we'll see. We we'll see. We we'll see in two years' time. Yeah, uh, we we'll talk about this. Okay. All right, sir. Th thank um, you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Jerry Johnson has been our guest uh, on Off the Press. I look at the headlines from the pages of the National Daily. He's a chief lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Thank you, Mr. Johnson, for your time. Um, we have more ahead, MSC, on the breakfast this morning. And, of course, we're going to be telling you what happened today in history. Shortly after that, we head straight to our very first major conversation. We'll be right back. Please stay tuned. <laughs>